Praise the Lord, everyone. It's another edition of 153greatfish.website. It's uh, a great Sunday morning, and uh, we're going to continue with our series on Revelation today. But before we begin, of course, we want to pray and invite the presence of Jesus to our study. Lord Jesus, we praise you, mighty God. We ask you, Lord, to be part of our study. Enlighten our minds, God. Thunder at us, Lord. Speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Alrighty, so on we go. Today's study is the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets. And that's what we're going to be studying here uh, for the next few moments. Can you say praise the Lord? So here's our outline today. It's not going to be very long. We're going to reveal or review seals one through seven and talk about the four to three paradigm that's in it. Uh, here we go. We're going to review the numbers and, and uh, calendars. First of all, seven is the divine number. We established that in last lesson. Its uses in blessing, punishment, inauguration, atonement, sacrifices, etc. You can read those on your own. Divine calendar, that's what the number seven is for, for days, weeks, festivals, years, jubilee release, and agricultural seasons. And for divine counting, number of sacrifices, lambs, bulls, doves, bowing to the ground, Lamps, touches, sprinklings, etc. Vials, plagues, thunder voices, seals. Uh, it's all over the book of Revelation, the book of Leviticus. Here's our outline for today after our review. We're going to talk about the seventh seal. We've gone through the first six seals already. We saw the four to three paradigm where the four creatures were interested in the first four seals and then uh, not the next three seals. But so we see the seven trumpets <clears throat> coming at the seventh seal. This is the Feast of Trumpets, also known as Rosh Hashanah. This is the festival of seven trumpets. Again, it has the four to three paradigm, just like the seals do. The first four trumpets are uh, examined in detail, and then the three woes come, which are the, la the final three trumpets. So it's got the four to three paradigm. That's the way I think of it. It uh, concludes with the three woes. We're going to be uh, predominantly talking about Revelation 8 through 9. So the seventh seal is opened, and what happens? There's silence in heaven for 30 minutes. Uh, this is found in Revelation 8, 1. This is a solemn assembly. Now, the uh, sound of the cherubim wings, the voice of many waters, everything goes still. There's no voices heard. The Spirit of God is not moving. The angels are not worshiping. The cry of holy, holy, holy is not heard. Obviously, this is a solemn assembly, which is normally called right before a festival or during a festival. So the blowing of a trumpet called Israel to assemble and to seek God's face. Now, when the Bible says to seek God's face, it means to reverently seek him for repentance, to repent before him and to ask him to grant repentance. This is during a time when Israel's enemies were poised and ready to destroy them. And so it is with the church. This is going to be a time of solemn assembly in heaven and in the church. A lot of prayer meetings will pop up at that time. Joel 1, 14 through 15 talks about this, that there's a set apart time for a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and everyone living in the land to the temple of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Oh no, for the day of the Lord is here and like destruction from the Almighty, it is coming. A solemn assembly was to call God to defend Israel. And that's what the church will be doing. There'll be a lot of prayer meetings calling on God to help us, God, save us. They are destroying us. That's the solemn assembly uh, during the seven trumpets, which is the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah. So the festival of the seventh month, Rosh Hashanah, uh, begins what they call the head of the year, the first month of the year, even though it's the seventh month, they call it the head of the year. It's also called Yom Teruah, the day of blowing trumpets. Seven trumpets call seven times. So it's the day for counting Sabbath and Jubilee years. And uh, for example, uh, uh, the Sabbath year and the Jubilee year always fell on this day, on the Day of Trumpets, the, F the Feast of Trumpets, also known as Rosh Hashanah. Uh, that w phrase Rosh Hashanah is found once in the book of Ezekiel, I think in chapter 40. It means the head of the new year. Now the manifold purposes of the seven trumpets, okay, is, is uh, uh, becomes pretty evident after we watch this here, uh, this paradigm here. So, number one, it's a call to solemn assembly and a war call to God himself to bring about his day, that is a period of destruction. God is called to war to defend his church, to defend Israel. Second, it's a call to mankind to repent. The Feast of Trumpets is a call to, to mankind 
to repent. That's the Festival of Trumpets was a festival of repentance before the Yom Kippur Day, the Day of Atonement. It was a time to seek God's face, repent. Seven, of course, is the number of Sabbaths and Jubilees. It was counted from there, releasing men in the land. And three groups of people during Rosh Hashanah are marked into God's books. Now, it's very important to understand that this is what's going on. A marking of the righteous, a marking of the wicked, and a marking of those wicked who repent during the Rosh Hashanah period. Those are the three groups of people that are marked. And we'll see that here in the book of Revelation. Moving on. Revelation 8, 4. The smoke of the incense with the prayer of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. This is the call to remembrance. This is a call for God to defend them. These are the prayers. These are the prayer meetings that are going on on earth during the great persecution. So seven angels stand before God. These are the same angels, I believe, that are that are representative of the seven churches. Seven trumpets are given to them. And uh, remember, those seven churches of Asia that were in the shape of the constellation Pleiades were in various conditions of piety. Laodicea couldn't be seen. It was a self-sufficient church of material wealth. Uh, we know that there were problems in the Ephesus church. They left their first love. We know that only the Smyrna church and the church of Philadelphia had no uh, strikes against them. That's why it's a call to the churches to repent. That's why these seven angels are given the seven trumpets. It's a call to repent for these uh, of these seven churches. Now the eighth angel comes and stands before the altar of incense, bringing the prayers of the saints with him into God's remembrance, then casts these prayers to earth, which unleashes thunder, which always represents God's voice, rumbling, shaking, light. Uh, that's what's going to happen during this period to the church, a shaking and a purification time. So the four trumpets sound, then the three final trumpets of woe sound. That's the same four, three par paradigm that we saw of the seven seals. Now trumpets one through four purify the churches, the righteous. They determine who is false, who is wicked, who is a hypocrite. That's the purpose of the first four trumpets. So let's take a look at that. Trumpets five through seven separate the righteous from the wicked, the sheep from the goats. And specifically, the false church, Babylon, comes into God's remembrance, and we're going to see that in these trumpets. So trumpets one through four purify the church. Now trumpet one, one third of the earth, one third of the trees, and all green grass are burned. That means they are purified. So the dross of the corporate church culture, you know, the, the moneyed up churches that are uh, the mega churches where you can kind of live any way you want to. There's no piety. There's no real relationship with God. It's all superficial. The dross of that corporate church culture, people that are running their churches as if they're a Fortune 500 company, uh, adopting the uh, uh, church management techniques of several of the church gurus, that culture is going to be removed through this purification. Recall Revelation 15:2, when the saints stood on the sea of glass, with the fire burning. Trumpet two is a burning mountain is thrown into the sea of glass. It says, just says the sea, but this is the sea of glass. This turns one third of the sea to blood. This is martyrdom. One third of the creatures, these would be the angels to the churches. They are silenced and one third of the ships, the churches themselves are destroyed. This is a great persecution that the Bible talked about in the seals. Trumpet three, the blazing great star, wormwood, bitterness falls. It falls into the church and it fouls one third of the living waters. That's the rivers and the springs. It follows them up with bitterness. So the wounded spirit of, of church insiders who cannot eat anymore from their pastor, they blame each other and they focus on church hypocrisy instead of on Jesus Christ. They get separated <laughs> and the wormwood uh, star separates them. You're going to have to live for Jesus beyond your bitterness. You'll have to resolve it the Bible way. Look at Luke 17, 1 through 5, if you want to know how to get rid of your bitterness. Trumpet 4, one third of the light is vanquished, the sun, the moon, and the stars. So the weak and deluded preaching is identified during the perilous times. One third of Christian preachers compromise and they preach antichrist values that the world accepts. This is happening right now where love is being redefined as man on man, woman on woman. That is not God's definition of love. There's a huge compromise going on and one third of the light is vanquished. So we see that the first four trumpets are for purification of the church. Trumpet five, now this, this is given to, a key is given to an angel to the bottomless pit. This is a worker for God. His name is Apollyon the destroyer. 
And then these locust soldiers, okay, locust soldiers are released with a mission. They're to torment the unbelievers, the wicked, anyone without the seal of God in their foreheads. In other words, what you have in your forehead, the values that you hold, the, the plan of salvation that you adopt, the relationship you have with Jesus Christ, that is your seal, that is your mark. If you hold on to the modern secular values of the Antichrist and you're marked with civil rights and civil wrongs, you're gonna have the wrong mark. Now notice that the destroyer is not allowed to touch green grass, which always represents new converts or trees, which represent elders. Uh, he's not allowed to touch them. Those that have the seal of God in their foreheads. Can you say praise the Lord? How God puts a hedge about his own. He's only allowed to uh, go after unbelievers. So they, the Bible gives us a visual description of these uh, locust soldiers. There's 200 million of them. They seem to be demonic horsemen. They're organized for spiritual warfare under a spiritual power class of angel, Abaddon King, a general of God's vengeance. Abaddon or Apollyon, the destroyer, is also identified in the book of Jeremiah. We're gonna go through that here. So these soldiers were created for one hour, a day, a moment in time, when they're going to take out the unbelievers and, and uh, torment them, and they're gonna take down spiritual Babylon. So the local soldiers attack the goats, not the sheep. The torment of the compromised Christians living a double life of syncretism. That's where you mix two belief systems together, one of idolatry, one of Christianity. You can't syncretize, you can't mix, you can't dilute the wine with the waters of doctrines of men, the philosophy of Greece, which is throughout the church today. You can't do that, that's syncretism. Also these Christians live a double life of fake news doctrines, doctrines of men not found in scripture and also compromised lifestyles, uh, people that are drinking, taking drugs, carrying on. I, I noticed there was a Christian, a so-called Christian concert where people had uh, hot tubs in their pickup trucks, drinking beer. Listen, that looks exactly like the world. That's Woodstock values. Um, that's not Christian lifestyle. No, there, there has to be some holiness in your life and you get holiness by drawing close to God. So let's move on here. Trumpet six is a release of the four angels bound at the Euphrates River who hold the Jeremiah 50 through 51 scroll that Jeremiah's assistant, Sariah, tossed into that river. Now, I just wanna say, most people haven't read Jeremiah 50 and 51. I'd recommend that you read it in the Jubilee Bible or the ESV and or maybe even the NLT, which is not very accurate, but I'd recommend you read those two chapters, which is a scroll that was tossed into the bottom of the Euphrates River with a stone by this man, Sariah. Now, it's a near far prophecy, okay? The Jeremiah 50 through 51 prophecy is the mother of harlots, near far prophecy. Yes, it was oriented towards Nebuchadnezzar and that kingdom, but also towards the false church system that's been set up after the apostles uh, died out. So the locust army is now unleashed on Babylon. That's the false church. You see that in Trumpet 6. They have lion heads because they, they, they look like Christ, who they destroy one third, one third of mankind with their mouths. And of course their mouths have fire, brimstone, smoke, false doctrine coming, on, coming out of those folks. So why the number four? Because there are four corners of the world. This is a worldwide false church. And uh, there's only one church that meets that definition today. So Jeremiah, let's read the, some of the highlights from the Jeremiah 50, 51 prophecy. And I'll just read it out loud here. God says, I'll set a trap for you and you will be caught Babylon, but you don't realize it. You will be found, you'll be seized because you challenged the Lord. Verse 31, look, I'm against you, you arrogant one, declares the Lord God of hosts. Indeed, your day is coming, the time of your judgment. 46, at the shout that Babylon has been seized, the earth will be shaken and the cry will be heard among the nations. And moving on, uh, verse six of chapter 51, flee from Babylon and each of you escape with your life. Don't be destroyed because of her guilt for it's time for the Lord's vengeance. He is paying back what is due her. Babylon has a golden cup in the Lord's hand, making the whole earth drunk. The nations drank her wine, therefore the nations have gone mad. Verse 14, the Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, I surely will fill you with soldiers like a swarm of locusts. Do you see this? There's the, there's the soldiers of God from the, the abyss, from the bottomless pit. 
and they'll sing songs of victory over you. Look, I'm against you, destroying mountain, who destroys the whole earth, declares the Lord. Come out of her, my people. You read that again in Revelation 18, 4. Flee for your lives from the Lord's anger. Indeed, the destroyer, Apollyon, is coming against her, against Babylon. For the Lord is a God of recompense. He will repay in full. Can you say praise the Lord? So trumpet six, Babylon does not repent. Revelation 9 tells us about this in verse 21. And it says this, the rest of the men who were not killed, who were not killed by these plagues, all right? That's a spiritual death from the mouth of the locusts. They did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and the images of gold and silver, of brass, of stone, of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. They did not repent of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Listen, there's one worldwide church that has murdered its way, uh, will not allow any competitors. It uses sorceries, the mixture of two faith systems together. Fornication, okay? Meaning that it has uh, uh, put two faith systems together, one from God, some of some from God, some from the devil, nor of their thefts. There's one church that would murder people and allow other people to uh, practice theory, take their assets. We talked about that last week with the Cathars. They did not repent of their hands that they should not worship demons. Now notice the key worship is gold, silver, brass, stone, wood, materialism. So what religious system represents one third of mankind over the last 2000 years? Do I even need to say it? The locust army appears to be a priesthood class of the false church. Let me say that again. The locust army appears to be a priesthood class of the false church teeth like a lion that represents the uh, Daniel's metal man made of steel or excuse me of iron mixed with clay in its feet with had the, the terrible beast that had had these teeth that chewed everything up. These locusts look to be false prophets, false Christs, false pastors. So Re Revelation 10, 11 through 14 concludes the second woe of the three and that's what we're gonna go over uh, next time. So we just reviewed the Feast of uh, Trumpets and uh, that's where we'll stop today. Um, listen, the book of Revelation is not that difficult to uh, uh, discern if you know your Old Testament. So I challenge each of you to read uh, those two chapters in Jeremiah because they will become meaningful throughout the rest of the book of Revelation. Can you say praise the Lord? All right, that's where we'll stop today. God bless you. We'll see you next time when we review those next two chapters in Revelation. God bless you.
went to school, Darwin's lies, I'm a fool, marriage vows, that for me, Google porn, no one sees, plastic toys, football shoes, Jesus coming, now I lose. 